This is the Scoop for Tuesday. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines. The Florida Policy Institute is recommending state lawmakers fix prisons that need critical repairs. The group analyzed a report examining the most pressing needs at the state's correctional institutions. Lawmakers commissioned KPMG, a global consulting firm, to look into the shape of Florida's public prisons. After visiting 153 Department of Corrections facilities, the group released a report that found over a third of them were in critical or poor condition. Senior policy analyst Tashana Joseph-Mark at the Florida Policy Institute says critical repairs like fixing HVAC systems or installing new roofs cannot be delayed any longer. So we have seen record high heat and families of those who are incarcerated have been really vocal for years and saying, hey, like it is our loved ones are really suffering when it comes to the summer months because there's no AC. And while DOC funding in the state has been increasing over the past few years, Joseph Mark says there are other contributing factors to why maintenance has not been a priority. She says one reason is because people are spending more time in prison. So there is this thing called the 85% rule where everyone has to spend at least 85% of their sentences in prison, regardless if it's for a nonviolent crime. And that rule contributes to an aging population, which requires more funding for health care. Joseph Mark says modifying that rule to 65% for nonviolent crimes could save the state hundreds of millions of dollars in just a few years. She says the DOC constitutional mandate is to create a safe and humane environment for those incarcerated. And right now, that isn't happening. The Public Opinion Research Lab at the University of North Florida released findings of polls with voters in the state today. Of nearly 800 people surveyed, former President Donald Trump holds a seven-point lead on Vice President Kamala Harris. When respondents were also asked who they'd vote for if the U.S. Senate race were held today, 47% said they'd vote for the Republican incumbent Rick Scott, compared to the 43% who expressed they'd vote for Democrat Representative Debbie Mercasell Powell. But while Republican lawmakers got higher responses, two of the constitutional amendments on the ballot that would allow recreational use of marijuana and access to abortion both broke the 60% requirement from respondents who said they'll vote yes to approve. However, the amendment that would allow the partisan election of district school boards had mixed results. 40% said they'd vote no. 37% say yes, and 23% either didn't know or refused to answer. And you can see those results on our website, WMNF.org. Local artists were shaken after their artwork was covered with tomato soup during a gallery opening in Ybor City. WMNF's Chris Young reports one artist called the experience humiliating. Kira Gondak-Sylvia is a visual artist from Central Florida. She, alongside many other artists, submitted her work for the American Art Show. The way it was pitched to me was that it was this gallery's final show, and they were asking for art with the theme of American art. So I submitted a uh, canvas print, and it was accepted. The show was presented by the Department of Contemporary Art Tampa in Ybor's historic Crest Building, but the artist had no clue what would happen next. On opening day, artist and curator of the show, Emiliano Setacasi, threw tomato soup on their artwork. He said it was to signify his protest against the war in Gaza. Gondak Silvia was not there, but said she was shocked to find out her art was affected. It really just is a lot like bringing your kid to a a nursery and then the uh, person in charge going and abusing your kid. Other artists posted on social media expressing their outrage of their art being defaced without their knowledge. Said Akasi did not respond to WMNF's request for comment. However, on Instagram, he posted that he is sorry about the art, but while there is one less art gallery in Ebor, there is no more in Gaza. In a statement posted on social media, the Crest Contemporary says they were shocked about the destruction of the artwork in their walls and that it, quote, directly opposes the organization's mission. Chris Young, WMNF News, Tampa. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.